kind of rot that is in the IBC is so deep that uh, it will take perhaps a total overhaul of the institution. I think we need to seize this opportunity and form a new commission for this country as early as possible so that by the time we go to the election, we have an IBC that Kenyans have developed confidence in, that Kenyans have seen working during the by-elections, during the borderless review. We cannot keep incompetent, corrupt and unethical people in office simply because you want them to take, uh, undertake certain roles. Cut. Various uh, parliamentarians there speaking to the issue that is developing today, and that is the resignation of three. That means now a total of four commissioners have resigned. If you recall, Commissioner Rosalind Akombe uh, bowed out last year. I'm still here with my guests, Felix Awar and Willis Otino. Felix, um, I'd like to come to you. So uh, there have been calls for the chair to resign um, and just form this afresh. What are your thoughts on that? Ultimately, it would be good for the country to uh, completely overhaul the commission. But the call for the resignation of the chair appears to me to be suspect and motivated uh, by the resignation of these three commissioners. In fact, what I find as uh, before we begin to uh, demand of Chebukati to resign, let us not forget that what triggered this was the call by Chebukati on uh, the CEO to account for certain, uh, aspect, uh, to con uh, certain aspects of the 2017 elections. That would be the first time that we will, uh, uh, for sure, con uh, that we have ne first of all, we have never done a comprehensive audit or, or evaluation of an election except for 2007. My question is, why, what, ought to have, what should not be lost is that the chair actually made certain demands and certain directives on the CEO to account on uh, especially the procurement issues that uh, bedevil or that uh, the IABC undertook in 2017. Let us not forget, that is one of the major uh, uh, weaknesses, one of the major shortcomings that, that this commission is actually faced with. First, they would ha they, there was a question of the uh, exorbitant payments that were made to advocates. Uh, let us not forget that of all the major procurements that I, the, the Secretariat or the CEO did uh, in the 2017 election, all of those procurements were done through direct source uh, tendering. In other words, there was no open tendering processes. Uh, the other thing that we should also not forget, assessing and evaluating the conduct of the CEO, which Chebukati actually demanded an audit of, was the body language of the CEO throughout the 2017 elections. Uh, Willis had the privilege of uh, prosecuting the Maina Kiai case. The IEBC through the CEO, in, even in terms where, uh, in circumstances where the IEBC was expected to embrace the decision of the judiciary, to adopt progressive guidelines that the courts had given, the, the IEBC through the Secretariat actually opposed. Now, we should not play tears here. There is the need to overhaul the commission, but also there is also the need to look into the questions of procurement and the conduct of this, especially the Secretariat, with regard to the conduct of 2017 elections. These are two issues, that, and one should not be lost uh, at the expense of the other. Mm, and... Um what are some of the ways of getting the other commissioners out um, if they should choose to stay? Willis, if a petition is brought, say, to Parliament, would that um, be able to solve the problem and let, then start let, a fresh? Let me say this. For the, good, for, the good of this, for the good of this country, that entire anniversary towers, everything in that commission should go. Not just the commissioners, but also the secretariat staff. All of them should go. They have done a great disservice to this country, and their continued stay in office is more of a blot in the face of our democratization process. I don't say when I say that it's the Chebukati should resign, I don't even for a moment hope that the others should remain. The rot is in the system. That system is a, is a systemic issue that goes right from the secretariat and permits into the commissioners. So that we must just bring down the whole third place. Then you start building it afresh. That is not a role that I believe can even be cured if you bring in new commissioners without dealing with the systemic problems that is endeared within the secretariat. Everything must go. Number two, tying to what Felix has said, there is not a single successful procurement that this 
present commission has done. And remember, the procurement process started at the Secretariat. Commission has only come at the tail end of it. None of them successfully. And also, there's a lot of criminality, a lot of criminal conduct that has taken place within the IBC by the commissioners and possibly by members of the Secretariat. All those criminal conducts should be investigated and persons concerned prosecuted for their role in perpetuating those criminal acts. So that, how do we remove these people? They should do the honorable thing and resign. As it were, as we speak right now, the IBC is not constituted in a manner that reflects the provisions of the Constitution on the composition of an independent constitutional commission. Okay, then number can two, I, um, yes. if they fail to resign, there may be a parliamentary process. We can is initiate a process for their removal because right now the grounds for their removal are so many. In fact, it is confirmed by their own conduct. Their own conduct demonstrates that this commission does not meet the principles that is expect and, and the thresholds expected of state officers and independent uh, constitutional commission. So a person can go to can go can petition parliament for a tribunal to be constituted to remove them. And that is a process which, as we sit right now, it is the most desirable process, but we don't wish to drag these commissioners to that process. Remember, part of the issue that even came out yesterday, Chebukati's own law firm, Kutu and Associates, has been mentioned to have been involved in uh, procurement service, I mean, in providing uh, legal services to the IBC. Of course, the argument they will make is that uh, Chebukati had resigned. But until recently, fairly, barely two years ago, he was a senior partner in that particular law firm. These are issues that we cannot hide under the carpet. These are legitimate concerns that needs to be looked into. So that we don't turn IBC. Remember, IBC is the most expensive electoral management body in the history of mankind. Nowhere in the world is election so expensive. And nowhere in the world has elections ever been this expensive as it is in Kenya. Why do we continue having the most expensive elections compared to even uh, backward states, compared to the most progressive states in the world. It cannot be okay. that we are the ones who are going to invest heavily in elections, but then the outcome of that expensive process does not even reflect the wish of the people of Kenya or aspire the confidence of the people in that particular outcome. Um, all right, we Willis. continue in that uh, particular line. Yeah, okay, and, and you raise some important issues because there have been those allegations um, that have been raised in a local daily today um, about um, possible conflict of interest uh, with the chair of the commission. A and again, uh, you know, allegations, and we will wait to see what happens with that. But, so Felix, uh, you know, what happens next? Like you said, we've had six commissions for each of our multi-party elections. We may well be on the path to getting the seventh. So how do we get it right once and for all? Because we're talking about rot and systemic issues that are going all the way down to the secretariat as well. But so, you know, what is, what is that silver bullet that gets us an electoral management body that is credible and can conduct, um, you know, a, a process that is seen to be free and fair uh, by all parties involved? Uh, first of all, uh, let me start by saying this, uh, that it has happened in other countries in Africa, that there are actually uh, countries in Africa where the Electoral Commission is looked upon to inspire confidence, that the Electoral Commission is, is trusted, and that the Electoral Commission, uh, a verdict or declaration of even in the face of very competitive elections, uh, is respected. And the typical example is uh, Ghana Electoral Commission, the Electoral Commission of South Africa, I've said it before. And what happened recently in uh, Liberia and, uh, and in Sierra Leone actually inspires confidence that there are commissions in this continent that can actually be looked at, or, or we can aspire to, to look uh, at those commissions for best practices. But let me say this, number one, we must attack, uh, accept the fact, uh, the, the fact that the independent model of appointing commissioners, which is what we have, has failed us. We don't need 10 elections to, uh, to confirm that. Uh, the, uh, the commission that, has served, that served this country well, the commission that presided over an election that was largely regarded as free, fair, and credible, was the IPPG commission. There has to be a conversation uh, on reconstituting a commission in the manner that uh, the independent, I mean, the IPBG commission uh, was reconstituted in, two, in, 2000, in 2002, 97, but then presided over the 2002 elections. 
What happened, that, uh, why that is the, the way to go, is because our politics is very competitive, divisive, and polarized. And we need those commissioners, as they did during the IPPG days, to checkmate uh, on each other. Secondly, we must also accept the, that the current structure that we have uh, prescribed to us by Krigler, which elevated the secretariat through the CEO, has failed. Uh, that, at the best, it has created two centers of powers, and the fears that Krigler, Krigler based its report was based on the, uh, uh, the ECK of 2007, where the commissioners were accused to be meddling in the affairs of the secretariat. The conduct of Ezra Chiloba, the CEO of IBC, and the rogue secretariat confirms that you cannot have a commission in our context, uh, or you cannot where two centers of power exist. Uh, there has to be a recognition that the chairman of the commission we ha is an executive chair who oversees the entire uh, uh, policy uh, and operational aspect of, uh, of the commission. I think if we cure that, then we will also then be able to cure uh, issues of uh, rogue secretariat that we have ended up with. Mm. Look at two things. One is how just the, the, look at just the procurement issues during 2017. We procured ballot papers, a, a, an exercise that comes at the tail end of the election. The ballot papers for 2017 elections were procured in December of 2016. I mean, which commission does that? Uh, we have systemic problem with our commission. Uh, I think that uh, we have to uh, recognize the fact that the weakest link in so far as uh, consolidation of democracy in this country is concerned has been and remains the election management. Okay. Um, a, a question for you, Willis, uh, and this is from one of our viewers, um, expressing, you know, skepticism at, you know, the way forward. Millie Jackson Wanja says, disbanded, then what? Commissioners investigated and charged. And even if, uh, because our head of state is a beneficiary um, of the process, uh, would there be um, a fair investigation? Would anything come of it? Um, and I've... He edited it a little bit because uh, she speaks much more forcefully about this issue. Um, but then, you know, so we ask ourselves, so then what? We, we take them to court and then there's uh, an investigation. I mean, Kenyans are sort of fatigued with this process. So where do we go from here? I don't, I don't think Kenyans should feel the fatigue. The, the, the battle for democracy and the battle for justice is a long, it's a long drawn battle. And along the way, we are going to face several challenges. But that should not be a reason for us to throw in the towel. That should actually be a motivation for us to fight harder. And we must start holding public officers accountable and responsible for their actions. Those who've messed up our electoral democratic landscape must be called to book so they can serve as an example to future election managers that the electoral process is not a child's play. It's not a place that you go and play with people's... Uh, because the election is the ultimate sovereign act of a people. And persons who are vested the responsibility to oversee elections have a higher calling, and they must at all times ensure that they deliver and respect the mandate of the people as given to them, and they facilitate the process in a very transparent and accountable manner. We must charge them. We must take them to court. They must be in prison for those criminal acts which they have perpetuated while in office. Number two, once that process has been started, I do believe that the most important part, even beyond the criminal uh, trial process, is how to constitute an election management body that aspires to and represents the true interest of the people of Kenya and has their full confidence. Develop an election management body that mirrors what the people of Kenya wants and the diversity of those people. If you look at the example that Felix has given, the IPPG commission of two, that oversaw the 2002 elections. By the time Uru Kenyatta stood up to concede to that election, the chairperson of the commission then, who was the turning office of presidential elections, Mr. Samuel Kivuitu, had not declared the final results. But the process was so transparent that everybody sitting in their home was able to do their own tabulation of the results, and we knew what the results were even before they were formally declared. And that was the spirit of the Maina Kiai case and what the court ordered, that elections must be held at the polling station, elections must be tallied at the constituency levels, and the declarations made at the constituency are final. 
It should be open to everybody to follow that process and do their own tallying within the comfort of their homes. What did IBC and Chebukati do in the last elections? They, con they, they converted Bomas to a national tallying center. They refused to disclose the people of Kenya the votes as were being tabulated and tallied at the respective consumer tallying centers. Okay. They ended so up displaying figures which they were not even able to competently defend when they were right. asked to do so by Willis, the Supreme Court of Kenya. Uh, Willis, I, I want to ask you this very briefly yes. because we're running out of time and I'd like us to conclude. Uh, the significance of this happening in the wake of the handshake. Just, you know, uh, let me put that out yes. there. Your thoughts um, on that. And um, electoral justice is one of those uh, issues my, my, that was mentioned in, 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 in that memoranda that they put out. Um, so the handshake, electoral justice, and fixing our electoral management body. What do you see as the nexus between the two? Because maybe some people are thinking, well, this will just be an opportunity to get rid of some and for one party to bring in uh, commissioners that would be favorable to them. Let, let me say this. The handshake was not about undermining the, role of the, the will of the people of Kenya. Part of the agreed memorial issues to be covered as a result of the handshake process is the question of electoral justice. And there is no better affirmation of the quest for electoral justice than what is right now happening and playing out to the people of Kenya. So the handshake does not undermine this process. That handshake actually is meant to facilitate a quick resolution, a quick, uh, a quick, a quick delivery of electoral justice to the people of Kenya. And we do hope that uh, all players in this political process and the conversation should be able to see it uh, for what it truly is. Because remember, the main thing that the Antichrist actually uh, will end up delivering to these people is the question of justice, national unity, and cohesion. You will never have those if the electoral process is still a process that does not deliver justice, does not represent and reflect the true wish of the people of Kenya. Okay, uh, Felix, uh, my final one to you. Why does this all matter? But even before we do that, perhaps you can end with that. But just to understand, the commission is currently constituted. Can they um, you know, take a look and review their conduct uh, during last year's uh, general election? Um, there's a process, a very important process of boundary review, uh, boundaries review that is uh, you know, pending before this commission. There's by-elections that are coming up. Um, so as constituted, can they even issue a statement on any of these matters? One would remember that Court of Appeal ruling in the case of Charity Ngilo regarding the constitution of the EACC and whether it was properly done uh, in a way to conduct investigations into the graft charges against her. Um, so legally speaking, can this commission, as it is, even while we wait for whatever process may come up, can they do any of those functions at all? Unfortunately, their hands are tied. Uh, if we are to respect the Court of Appeal ruling in the Charity Ngilu's case, but also in the Ojamon case uh, uh, with the EACC, uh, the commission is not properly constituted, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, so that will eventually really complicate uh, the matters. But that also brings into question uh, the timing of this resignation. Was it to uh, circumvent or forestall uh, what the chairman had called for, which was a comprehensive audit uh, on the conduct of the 2017 elections. Uh, we are staring at uh, turbulent times. There are only two options to, to, to it. One is to invoke the IBC Act and fill the four vacant positions. Uh, and uh, uh, that, of course, would then mean that the commission would then be reconstituted uh, so that they can have the requisite quorum that is contemplated by law. But as it is, uh, but let me say this, the, it is not just the com uh, this commission. Uh, there is a, a, a discourse that is emerging in this continent and it's called a, in, in, in conclusive electoral cycle, whereby an electoral, the phases, various phases of elections demonstrate of serious weaknesses, shortcomings, and challenges. And they are swept under the carpet. They are not dealt with decisively and they recur or re-emerge in the next election. Even as we deal with these fundamental rots of, of election management and among others, people are, Kenyans are already talking about 2017, uh, 2022 elections. Which candidate will you vote for? Who is leading in opinion polls? Now, Kenya is leading, Kenya, Chad, DRC, uh, and, uh, and uh, Zimbabwe and Uganda here 
uh, countries that have actually fallen in that category of having inconclusive electoral cycle. We don't deal or fundamentally resolve shortcomings and challenges that, have em that emerge in an election and begin to talk and indeed prepare for the next election. I think we need this as given as an opportunity, and if the handshake is anything to go by, to once and for all permanently and decisively deal with the issues of election management. Uh, because in this country, if IBC makes a mistake, if all people die, that is the difference. If I make a mistake or you make a mistake, you, uh, chances are that it will affect you or your family. But if I, IBC makes a mistake, people will die. We don't want that moving forward. And I can guarantee you, if the reckless talks about 2022 uh, elections continue unabated uh, without resolving these issues that uh, were, uh, were flagged out in 2013 and 2017 elections, then I can promise you it will be contested, yeah. there will be violence, and people will die. Indeed, thank you for bringing that into context. Felix Awar and Willis Otieno, I thank you both for your time this evening. That's our show. Thanks for watching. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. I will see you again tomorrow.